This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 191, Seven Content Marketing Trends to Watch in 2017. Welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you grow your tribe and your bottom line through insanely good content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is September 8th, 2016. Hello, hello, or as we say in Texas, howdy, and thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. Just a reminder, this podcast is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and now Google Play Music. So if you like what you hear, please feel free to click on over and subscribe. Uh, I'm also happy to report that my new book, The Content Marketing Coach, Everything You Need to Get in the Game and Win, is now available on Amazon. To see what experts such as Joe Police Jay Bear and Jeffrey Hazlett thought about the book and to snag a copy of your own, go to contentmarketingcoachbook.com. Now, as of this recording, the hard copy version is readily available and the Kindle version will be coming along in the next few days. So if you want the Kindle version and don't see it yet, um, hop on back a couple of days later and it will be available. I promise it is on the way. Okay, all this month, we are getting a jump on that 2017 content marketing strategy. And and folks, trust me, when we get into October and November, it's going to be a mad dash before we get to the holidays. So let's see what we can get done here in September to get that strategy in place so so that we're not scrambling uh, come December. Okay, last week was our back to school episode, and I shared some resources and ideas for continuing your education and honing your content marketing skills. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to check it out on iTunes or Stitcher or via the RSS feed. Today, we are talking about trends to watch in 2017, and these, of course, will be important to keep in mind as we plan our strategies for next year. But first, it's time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of News You Can Use. Some news out of Snapchat to kick off this week's news feed. Snapchat is making it easy for you to create your own, your very own customized geo filters. Uh, this is for those who want a more do it yourself approach to creating filters without having to mess with editing software like Photoshop. So it's kind of a Canva esque approach to creating your own filters. Um, From what I understand, they're pretty easy to use. You choose your theme, select the design, customize the text and the colors, and that's it. Geo filters start at $5 each with the price depending on the size and the time period. To learn more and to explore the templates available to you, go to snapchat.com slash geofilters. Okay, some news out of Facebook. Wouldn't be a news feed without Facebook now, would it? Um, If you have an app on Facebook, you'll now have access to new features um, in the analytics module to help you better understand your audience. Facebook just announced some updates to Facebook analytics for apps, and that includes People Insights, a new section that provides rich demographic information about the people using your app, and also push and in-app notifications. Now, I understand that this is still in beta, but that is going to help you reach your customers and automate your marketing campaigns with targeted messages while they are using the app. Very exciting stuff. Uh, For more information, you can check out the Facebook developer site. That's at developers.facebook.com and navigate to the news section. One more item, this one out of Pinterest. Pinterest has introduced an interesting feature that lets you retarget users who have interacted with your pins. And in an example that they gave on the Pinterest for Business blog, say a user pinned your after school snack ideas, well, that user can be retargeted in the future with things like birthday party treats or pins that are likely to appeal to that user. Um, So if Pinterest is a key element in your content marketing strategy, I would definitely give that retargeting feature a look. Uh, I will provide a link to that post on the Pinterest for Business blog in the blog post for this episode if you'd like more information. 
Okay, our content hit of the week. I, I found an interesting choice this week. It's a post titled, How Long Before My Content Marketing Shows Results. This is by Mike Huber over at the Vertical Measures blog. And I chose this article because it's a question I'm dealing with right now with one of my clients. They just started, just a few months ago, they, they brought me on. They just started blogging. They just started getting serious about social media. And they're they're getting antsy as we say in the south they are getting impatient they're saying okay you know we're seeing you know a couple of views here and there we're seeing a little interaction here and there when is this going to how long is this going to take to start paying off for us and I've even had clients in the past who, after six months or even three months, just threw their hands up and said, "Oh, this isn't working. you know forget this we're going to go buy some banner ads or or something like that. But um, and I, I like this article because Mike did some good research. And and so he reports how experts like Joe Polizzi and Beth Hayden answer the question, how long is this going to take? And um, he also offers some possible reasons why you might not be seeing the results that you hope for. For example, maybe your content isn't as search optimized as it could be. Um, and, you know, my own perspective on this question, I, I get it. I get it that, you know, you're putting dollars or euros or whatever your currency is into this content marketing campaign. And you want to know when this investment is going to pay off. But, you know, on the other hand, I think the biggest mistake marketers can make is to think of content marketing as a campaign. And those of us, especially old school marketers, we're trained to think in 90 day windows and 120 day windows and content marketing just doesn't work that way. It's as I told a client, it's not it's not a hunting exp expedition. It's a farming project. It's not about going out and getting your kill and dragging it back to your cave and, and letting it be the night's supper. It's about planting seeds, nurturing them, cultivating them. Um, giving them light and water, and then they will pay off. You know, no no farmer plants a row of corn and then goes to bed, wakes up and says, well, where the hell's my corn? Obviously, this doesn't work. Um, but I know that can be challenging, especially when we're talking about budgets. So this is an excellent article um, that Mike put together, and I will put a link in the blog post for this episode. Oh, my puppy mayhem going on. Sorry about that. Um, so... Is going, oh, that's a ball. Never mind. Um, I thought, thought I'd close the door on Sophie's head. Um, excellent article. And I, I recommend you might want to give it a look before you meet with your CMO or your CEO about your 2017 budget. Could offer some relevant insights there. Okay, that's it for this. <laughs> start over. That's it for this week's update. If you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers, I invite you to tweet it to me at at resonance c-o-n-t, resonance content with the e-n-t lopped off, so that we can share. Now it's time for this week's spotlight segment, seven content marketing trends to watch in 2017. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Hang on, Parker. It is only September. We just got back from Labor Day. Why the heck are we already thinking about trends to watch in 2017? Well, folks, as I've said before, the next few months are going to go by fast and not just because it's football season. By the way, first season game tonight. Woohoo! Um, but, you know, here in the States, once Labor Day is over and done with, vacations are ending and things start ramping up fast for the fall. And like I said, it's going to be a mad dash to the holidays and the end of the year. So this is the time to get a jump on our 2017 strategies. And one thing we need to do is stick our heads up and check out the trends that are going to impact our world as we look into next year. So I did quite a bit of research for this post checked out some very interesting um, predictions. And I want to give props to my sources, uh, Marketing Insider Group, also Content Standard, and then, of course, Content Marketing Institute for highlighting some excellent trends for us to think about. I'm going to start my list on a dark note, folks. Sorry, sorry to say, let's just get this unpleasantness over with. In 2017, we are going to see an increase in the quantity of content and a decline in overall quality. You know, it's, it's, 
it's it's happening. It's not going to happen. It is happening. As more brands jump on the content marketing bandwagon, they're thinking as long as we check content out of our list and get something out there, never mind if it was written by someone who can barely put together a cohesive sentence, um, we can check this off our list and be, be on with our day. Um so yeah, the the what we what has come to be known as content shock after Mark Schaefer's um, groundbreaking post a couple of years ago, it's becoming a reality, and the the content world is going to be absolutely flooded with new brands coming on the scene, and most of that content is going to be crap. So what can we do? What can we those of us who know what content marketing is all about and who really want to um, get more out of our investment and to really um, make an impression, what can we do? Number one, we can focus on our audience. Get get your get your audience personas out and figure out how you can better serve those people, how you can speak to their specific needs. Number two, we can up our quality game. We can always get better at how we tell those stories, the topics that we choose, and how we address them. And number three, we need to be creative. We can't you know, top 10 tips for blankety blank is just not going to cut it. Um, in, in 2017, we need to be creative and find ways to create content that lets us stand out and that is going to arouse curiosity and make people want to engage with our content. So that's the bad news. So let's look at uh, trend number two, which is user generated content is going to be gaining momentum next year. And I, I truly believe this because we are in an age where the average consumer has very sophisticated content creation devices in their own pockets, especially visual content, images and video. Um, they literally have that capability in their pockets with their smartphones. And we as brands need to harness the power of their input not only is it going to allow us to enrich our own content um, ecosystems but it's also a key point of engagement you know to to have someone's user generated content featured on your blog or shared in your social media that's a tremendous point of engagement that is going to earn you loyalty from those content creators so as we look to 2017 let's look at ways that we can incorporate user generated content in what we're doing Okay, trend number three, live video is going to continue to accelerate. It's it's just, um, you know, it's hard to believe that live video first became a thing, as the kids like to say, in, um, let's see, when was it? It was in spring 2015. So just over a year and a half ago at the 2015 South by Southwest when Meerkat came on the scene. Well, since then, we've had Meerkat, they're they're still around. They're they're not the talk of the town anymore. Then we had Periscope that was generating a lot of buzz for a while, and of course now Facebook is on the scene. They they hit an eight hundred pound gorilla, and um, live video has just. Uh, taken the web by storm. So, uh, and we're also seeing some more creativity applied to this medium. We're seeing fewer talking heads. You know, those first live videos were just a person's face talking to the screen. And we're starting to see more creativity applied to this medium. So it's time to think about how we're going to get on board with live video if we're not there already. And if we are there already, to see how we can incorporate some more creativity into how we use this medium. Trend number four. This is an interesting point. I think I think Jay Bear made this on one of the on one of the lists that I found. But brands will need to get real. We're going to see less of the slick, polished, approved by five different committees content, and we're going to be seeing more um, honest to goodness brand journalism. We're going to see more raw, unedited, unedited content. We're going to see more behind the scenes footage because, you know, people are wise to that, to that slick image and that, that uber polished content and that, and that, that video that's been edited within an inch of its light. They don't trust it anymore. So, um, in fact, I remember it was at a, um, at a BMA event probably about a year ago and the speaker 
was a marketing director for a major brand, and she said, I have asked our agency to stop color correcting our videos because they don't look believable. So both in our approach and in the in the kind of cosmetic um, approach to our content, we need to see about being more real, being more in the moment, um, you know, risking imperfection and letting people see imperfection and in favor of building a more personal relationship by giving their by giving our audiences that raw unedited content. Number five, we're going to see more serialized content in the future. And no, not just because of the popularity of the podcast serial, but um, but we need to find ways to not only capture attention and for a single experience, but to also to keep people coming back. So instead of thinking of blog posts and podcasts and other assets as one-off projects, uh, we need to look at doing more serializing, creating a series of maybe three or four installments of our on of our blog posts and our podcast and what have you. And that's going to keep audiences coming back. And that's going to keep them thinking about us in between exposure to that content thinking, okay, okay, what are they going to come up next? You know, what's going to be next on the list? Um, so look for more serial content as we or, or look for ways you can leverage serial content as we think about our 2017 strategies. Number six, newsletters will remain relevant. And yes, sometimes clients roll their eyes when I bring up email newsletter, but guess what? They still offer major bang for your buck. And here's the reason. Instead of having to worry about where Google will decide to rank your blog post in those search search engine results pages or whether Facebook will even bother to show your post to anybody, email newsletters deliver your content to audiences where they live. And that is in their email inboxes. Email is still relevant. We are still addicted to it. We check it several times a day. I would be willing to bet that many of you sleep with your smartphones at on your nightstand and the first thing you do is open up that email program. And um, is it perfect? No, there there is no perfect medium. But e- e- email newsletters, and I hate the term e-newsletters, but email content is still going to be relevant because it is the most direct line that we have to the people in our audience. It's the most personal connection. It's not something that we put out there on Facebook and hope and pray that somebody sees it. It is being delivered. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows how it works. And it is still relevant. And then finally, um, trend number seven is we're going to continue to see native advertising gain momentum as a valid content marketing strategy. Um, It's funny, Joe Polizzi once called native advertising the gateway drug to content marketing. And it's true, native advertising, it lets brands leverage the um, the the exposure and the prestige of media outlets to make an impression on a whole new audience. Um, and if you watch the last season of South Park, you will recall that this uh, that native advertising was a major storyline and and the big punchline. Spoiler alert: is that there is a child at the South Park Elementary who is in fact an ad. She was created by an agency, and she is an ad. Um, All kidding aside, um, native advertising is gaining momentum. For example, there was a recent story in the New York Times, a a journal, an editorial type article about women inmates, and that was actually sponsored by the Netflix series Orange is the New Black. So... However you may feel about native advertising, some people are repulsed by it. Um, some people think it's it's sneaky and deceptive. Um, however you feel about it, it think about it. Media outlets need the revenue because their subscription rates are declining. Brands need the exposure and are willing to shell out those dollars or euros or what, or what have you. And native advertising neatly solves the problems of both those groups. So if you have not considered native advertising in the past and you are really looking for ways to get your brand out there in a, in a content-focused way, uh, definitely think about native advertising as we look to 2017. Okay, those are my picks for seven trends to watch as we launch our str- launch into our strategies for 2017. And those are kind of big picture things. I didn't talk about specific platforms or, you know, Snapchat or Instagram. Um, those are kind of big picture. Maybe later on in the season, we'll look um, 
get take a little more granular approach. Anyway, if you have any questions or want to add to the conversation, I would love to hear from you. And the best way to reach me is through the website, resonancecontent.com. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. I just got done with a really fun project. I was working with Package Design Magazine on an article about content marketing on product packaging. And it was absolutely fascinating, folks, because this is an area of content marketing I had never thought about. You know, I think about, um, you know, blogging, social media, if you want to go offline, think about in-person presentations or maybe physical magazines. But I had never thought about packaging as a venue for um, for communicating our content. But smart brands are making very clever use of their packaging to do some quality storytelling. And uh, for example, Kashi has started putting stories on its cereal boxes of the, the people behind the products, the people who make the flowers and other ingredients. Uh, also, Snickers is doing a lot of fun stuff with their Hunger Bars campaign. Um, you may recall the they had a they had a 2015 campaign that's actually coming back in 2017 where they replaced the Snickers logo with hunger symptoms like um, grouchy or grumpy or spacey, and that tied in with their "You're Not You and You're Hungry" campaign. So I would I would encourage you if you are in that B two C realm and you are selling a retail product and looking for new ways to engage customers, definitely look at your product packaging and see how you can leverage that asset to advance your own brand storytelling. Okay, campers, that is it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play Music or via our RSS feed. And if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. Also, remember that the Content Marketing Coach, everything you need to get in the game and win, is now available. To learn more about the book and to snag your own copy, go to contentmarketingcoachbook.com. As you know, I always like to leave you with a quote, and today's comes from Mother Teresa, who was made a saint in the Catholic Church just a few days ago. She once said, quote, be faithful in small things, because it is in them that your strength lies, unquote. And I think that applies perfectly to our work as content marketers. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you again next week. Take care.